Well, I've come into the city for today's vlog. I'm actually standing in the middle of uh, Queen Square and behind me um, is Jem Hobbs, who is a stone carver, a stone mason, busy waving to you because he can overhear me, who is uh, busy doing repairs to the obelisk. Now we have in this city, because we have world heritage status, an organisation called the Bath World Heritage Enhancement Fund. Now these people have a little bit of money that they can use uh, on minor repairs to our heritage fabric. Uh, this is regarded as a minor repair, although Jem working on his own is probably, probably having a devil of a job to get it absolutely right. Um, I have done a chat with him and I'm going to hand you over to him in a moment and he can explain exactly what he's doing. Uh, but I just wanted to say that the one thing I did miss coming into town today was all the activity on Great Pulteney Street where apparently yesterday uh, they were filming scenes for the detective series uh, which is based in Bath called MacDonald and Dodds. A friend of mine who actually lives in Great Pulteney Street said uh, one of the main characters was driving up and down the street uh, in a four-wheel drive car uh, while they were filming it. Uh, I've no idea when the next series will be broadcast. Uh, as soon as I find out I'll let you know. Uh, then we could all have fun spotting the Bath locations. Anyway, enough from me. Let's uh, let Jem explain what he's doing. Hi, Jem Hobbs, stone carver, bath trained mason. I'm proud of it. Um, so this is the stone that I was given by Tom at Clifton. A bit of bath stone. So as you can see, it looks square, but obviously we've got we've got a slight batted angle on there. 82 degrees, I think. Maybe about 80. I think it's about 84, but I was looking at Tom's drawings and I wasn't sure. So um, the the worst bit of the day is usually chopping out. So if you come right in here, you can see what I had to remove, but a lot of the stone had defrost or delaminated because of basically the bed that it had gone in on. They put it in in its edge bed and it wasn't a particularly good bit of bath stone. What we've got is a hopefully a lovely bit of bath stone which is going in its natural bed. That'll slide in there, uh, well, with some grunting. Um, and hopefully do a much better job. And then we've got the smaller piece that sits on top there. So basically, just like any building project, stagger joints for strength. Um, so that'll be the easier of the two. And we've got a pitted, um, pecked, we call that a pecked surface or just a, something to bite in for the lime mortar to, to sort of key in. And ultimately I'll do the same thing to the underside of that stone as well. So when it goes in, we've got a sandwiching of, of mortar beds squidging together, and then that'll go off over time. Jim, it's not the first repair that's been done to the obelisk. And you were saying how bad the stone was that you took out. That yeah, wasn't an original was it? No, there's been a course down here, which is the last, these last two runs, I think probably 20 or 30 years. And it's not, you know, it's not, it's often not the Mason's fault. He's got the stone that he's got, he's been given that, and that's, that was good at the time. It came out of the quarry wet, dried out, and, um, and looked good, looked the part, but sometimes you just don't know what the weather's going to do. As and, a, as a professional stone Mason, Looking at the obelisk overall, it stood here since 1788. Uh, how would you rate the quality of the job? The quality of, well, it's it's got some good lines. I mean, I'm looking straight up here now and it's, you know, for that length of stone that's been pieced together. And I mean, I, I've never built an obelisk, so I don't know how difficult it is. I guess it's all about getting it all up and then finishing it, basically dressing it. I think that's probably what was done post fixing.